Here is another physics problem. I made this one up, but it's kind of a historical thing. So let me explain the situation. I have right here a gold atom, uh, you know, gold. And over here I have an alpha particle. So an alpha particle is a type of radiation, a type of radioactive decay element. Uh, it's essentially just a helium atom without the electrons. So it's two protons and two neutrons. So this has a charge of plus two uh, electrons. And gold nucleus has a charge of plus 79 electrons because it's it has 79 protons in there. Imagine that this gold, this alpha particle shot towards the gold particle, and it's going to slow down because they repel and it'll eventually stop and get repelled. And we want to find out how close it gets. Now, why do we even care about this? This was a really, really important, and this is not part of the problem, this is just bonus stuff. So there was this uh, experiment the Rutherford gold foil experiment. And the nice thing about gold, other than it doesn't interact with oxygen, so it doesn't, it stays shiny, is that it's very, very, very soft and you can smash it down and make very, very, very thin sheets. So you can get a sheet of gold that's approximately one atom thick. It's a little bit long, it's obviously not one, but you're very, very, very thin. And then I can shoot alpha particles at that gold atom and see what happens and why would you do that? Well, the idea is to kind of see the nature of matter and what they expected. If gold has 79 protons and 79 electrons, it's neutral. This positive charge should just mostly go through it because it's neutral, right? But what they found was that in some cases, the, the alpha particle would get repelled back because it's interacting with the nucleus. And so that led to the idea that uh, the, the positive charges were in the nucleus of the atom and then the electrons, the very low mass electrons were outside of that. And they knew the mass of electrons from a different experiment. So there you go. That's why it's important. Okay, so in this experiment we have the gold nucleus which we're going to assume is very heavy and it does not recoil and the alpha particle comes in and we want to know how close they get. So the mass of the alpha particle 6.68 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. The initial velocity 5.3 times 10 to the 6 which is super fast but not the speed of light, so we don't have to worry about that. And then we have the charge of the gold is plus 79, the charge of the alpha is plus two. And of course we want to use the work energy principle. Work is the change in energy, and we need to define our system, which is gonna be the alpha particle plus the gold. So gold, I'm, I write AU for gold in case you haven't seen on the uh, periodic table, gold is AU. Uh, this is the Greek letter alpha, and we represent that for the alpha particle. So we get to learn Greek letters too, bonus. So if that's my system, what kinds of energy can I have? Well, one, I can have kinetic energy because the objects are moving. And two, I can have potential energy. So the kinetic energy, K, is one half mv squared. And then the potential energy, uh, we'll call that just U, it's gonna be Q, times uh, K big Q over R. That's how we find electric potential energy. And Q is the charge of the alpha, big Q is the charge of the gold. I just picked that. So there's no work on the system, so zero is gonna be the final kinetic energy minus initial change in, plus uh, the final potential energy. I'll write this as K Q Q over R2 minus initial K Q, Q over R1. Now, where does this start? Let's assume it starts an infinite distance away or very, very far. So this term goes to zero because R is very, very large, so that's zero. And we're trying to find R2, how, how close it gets. Now, what about these two terms? Well, we know the initial velocity, I called it zero there, and we also know the final velocity, right? Because as this gets closer and closer and closer, it's going to slow down and then get repelled. So that point where it's at its closest point, it has zero velocity. So K2 is zero. So let's just put everything we know. Zero is minus one half M, I'll call it V1 now, V1 squared, and that's the mass of the alpha, plus K Q Q over R2. And you'll notice this is a negative term. Q and Q are both positive, so this is a positive term so we can solve for everything. Let's just go ahead and solve for R2. I'm gonna add that to both sides. I get uh, one half M 
v1 squared equals k q q over r2. Now I can multiply both sides by r2 and divide by this, and I get r2 is going to be equal to 2 k q q over m v1 squared. All right, so if I multiply that up here, and then I divide by m1 v1 squared, I multiply by 2, I get that. Let's go ahead and put in our values and we'll be done. So R2 is 2. I need to put in the number 2. I can look that up. Uh, K is the Coulomb constant. 9 times 10 to the 9th. I'm going to leave off the units. Q is um, 2 times E. So I'm going to write this as uh, 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. That's a charge of an electron. And then I have the charge of the uh, the gold is 79 times that. So I actually have 2. I'm going to put 2 times 79. And this is going to be squared, right? Because I have two e's in there. And then on the bottom, I have the mass of the, of the alpha particle, 6.68 times 10 to the negative 28. And then I have the velocity squared, which is 5.3 times 10 to the 6th squared. OK, practice using your calculator. Be friends with your calculator. This is the classic problem where you can just go bonkers. Because if you don't enter in your scientific notation numbers correctly or your order of operations correctly, you, know, you could square just the, ninth, the 10 to the 19th and not the 1.6, and the same thing down here. Or you could divide by things wrong. So just be very careful about how you enter that. I recommend using uh, the scientific notation button. If you enter this in with the scientific notation button, it treats out as one number. So when you square it, it squares the whole thing. Uh, I am using, just so you know, I'm using this calculator. This is a, a Hewlett Packard, an older one. It was actually, I found it. My wife used to use this one too, but uh, I had one that was even older than this. And, and the thing that's nice about this, when you enter, you enter a number, and then you enter another number, and then you enter the operation. So that's why I always do things that are a little bit weirder. But it saves you from having to enter in parentheses and stuff like that. If you don't have this calculator, you know, just use your calculator that you're happy with. I'm happy with this one. I like Python too, but okay, let's do it. Two, enter, uh, nine times 10 to the ninth. Now I'm using that scientific notation button. Two times, 79 times. Now I'm gonna enter the, the 1.6, 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Enter, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna enter that in, and then I'm gonna square it. Now I'm going to multiply. Okay, so I've done this whole top thing right here. Now I'm going to divide by this, which is pretty easy. Uh, 6.68 times 10. Next, I'm using scientific notation. Negative 28 divided by. Now I'm going to enter this number. 5.3 times 10 to, the 10 to the 6. Enter, and I'm going to square it. And then I'm going to divide. And I get R2 is 3.88 times 10 to the negative 12 meters. And you know, this is an important calculation because a lot of times we need to calculate stuff like this to see if they get close enough for the strong nuclear force to take over and be stronger than the repulsive force. And then the two things can fuse together. I don't know what the value is, but that's how you would do that. Also, just a note, if things were going even faster, you would have to use different forms for the energy because you have to take into account that things are moving closer to the speed light. But we're not going to do that in this class. So that's that.